Hi, I'm calling from Port Wanimi Beach. I was walking my dog on the beach and uh, we seem to have come across a starving sea lion pup. Uh, it's not really breathing, it's not moving. Uh, it looks just like a bag of bones. It's not looking good. Um, if you could please send someone to help. This year, the Channel Islands Marine and Wildlife Institute, also known as Simwe, has brought in a record number of animals. At this date, early September, we're at 342, which is a record for our facility. Simwe started, it was a dream of mine, actually from a young man to, to understand the causes of stranded marine mammals. So, so our purpose is, is very simple. It's, it's to rescue, rehabilitate, release, do research, and educate the causes of stranded marine mammals. We are an all-volunteer organization, so we really do rely on the public and private donors to help support our organization. I grew up in a rescue family, rescuing dogs and other kinds of animals. And so naturally I wanted to get involved rescuing sea animals. <laughs> uh, so getting involved with Simui was pretty organic. I just looked up, Googled and word of mouth, uh, who was doing it, who was, who was working with these animals, who was helping them. And that's what led me to Simui and uh, it's just been a great experience. I was a young kid, my mother's a nurse. The cat would drag in a baby bunny. I'd try to save it, I was five years old. So I'm a veterinarian by heart, not by training. I mean, of course, training occurs, but it's, it's in your soul. And rehab is just part of it. And, and so really all I do now is the same thing on a much larger scale. I was a, I was a water baby, I always loved being around the water, I always loved being around the animals. And I, this is my lifestyle, not just a, not just a job, it's my lifestyle. So I founded Simley based on those principles which is, a, you know, as a little kid trying to save animals, same thing. Every animal that comes in is, has a different problem. Sometimes they're the same, but most of the time they're, they're slightly different. So our basic approach is, is application of appropriate medications for whatever problem it may have, getting it to eat, to put weight back on it. Once we get these animals to a, to a nice, healthy weight, we can release them back to the wild. We just kind of, yep, shove, shove, shove. There we go. There were definitely days where I know I personally was overwhelmed and we were here until very late into the evening doing medical exams, intaking animals, accepting even more animals, going out and rescuing an animal on your way home. But um, I think most of our volunteers really enjoyed the challenge and really enjoyed seeing so many animals um, make progress and helping so many animals and even the animals that did not make it through rehabilitation, our volunteers enjoyed participating in the necropsies for those and learning about why these animals died, which is uh, one of my personal favorite things to do is learn the why. What happened to this animal? Why did this animal not, why is it not one of the ones that made it through? One of the most rewarding aspects of what we do is releasing an animal that was previously sick or, or ill or injured back to the wild. Uh, it's, it's, it's the whole purpose of what we do. It's, it's the full circle. It's taking an animal that, that maybe wasn't going to make it and it's, it's rewarding to, to watch them swim away. There are certain animals that do make an impact on you, certain ones that you don't think are gonna make it and you put a lot, a lot of effort into, and then they pull through, um, or some that just have really funny personalities that you tend to, to like a little bit more, um, but the ultimate goal and the best happiness is watching the sea lion that you rehabilitated be released back into the wild. You know, you see a stranded sea lion on the beach and you think that maybe you don't want to interfere with natural selection or what's going on with Mother Nature. But my perspective is that it's really important to give these sea lions a second chance. And, you know, maybe the reason that these higher UMEs are happening is something that environmentally 
us humans are doing <laughs> to the world. And so my perspective is that we should do our part to care for them and to give them just a second opportunity to provide them with the resources to make a comeback and be re-released back into nature. That was awesome. Getting to see him jump back in is pretty, pretty special. Sim, we rely so heavily on volunteer and people helping us out so that we're able to operate and do these kinds of things. You know, it's um, it's pretty cool to see because everyone seems to have something to give. You know, I don't have much, but I have time one day a week that I can devote, and I would totally do more than that if I could. But uh, when you have a lot of people supporting a cause, and even if it's just a little bit that they're able to give, or a lot in the case of Island Packers, letting us tag along and release them, it produces a really cool end product, and I think makes a really big difference. I know it makes a really big difference Absolutely. for the sea lions. They're who it's all about, right? She drink tea, she love, and we'll stop growing, she love.